today on BCIT Magazine, flames tear through an abandoned driving range on Hastings Street. Vancouver police have seized more than $200,000 worth of stolen goods from a Vancouver couple. And a gym in Langley is taking women's safety into their own hands. Hello and welcome to BCIT Magazine. I'm Regan Hasegawa. And I'm Eric Blow. Our top story this week, a fire broke out at an abandoned golf center in Burnaby. Crews were able to contain the blaze, but as reporter Tim Brooke tells us, RCMP are investigating the cause of the inferno. Burnaby Fire and the RCMP are investigating after an early morning blaze in an abandoned golf facility. The clubhouse fire at Hastings and Kensington shut down six blocks of traffic along this busy corridor for several hours. Crews were particularly concerned about this nearby oil refinery, Shell gas station and cell phone tower. Uh, the fire came in at about uh, 4 a.m. Uh, first arriving units uh, found very heavy smoke and fire. Um, a second alarm was called immediately. Um, we had 32 firefighters on scene. Crews were called to the fire early Monday. The call came in when a homeless man spotted smoke and ran to go phone 911. He said he heard voices walking away from the building after the blaze began. Right now the fire is uh, deemed suspicious. It's uh, under investigation at this time by uh, Burnaby Fire Department, uh, Fire Prevention Office and the RCMP. Firefighters were still on the scene into the late afternoon to look after hot spots. They say at its highest, flames were 30 meters tall. According to RCMP on scene, no one was injured in the blaze. Tim Brooke in Burnaby for BCIT Magazine. Thomas Mulcair was recently voted out as NDP leader. Despite his party voting on a feature without him, Mulcair received a standing ovation not only from the NDP, but also the Conservative and Liberal Party in the House of Commons. The VPD's anti-fencing unit tracks down those who purchase stolen goods and sell them for a profit. And as Kurt Morgan reports, they have just made a major bust, involving two people you may not expect. The Vancouver Police Department's anti-fencing unit arrested an elderly couple after they seized nearly $200,000 worth of stolen goods. They appear to be a, a, a normal uh, Vancouver, uh, a normal couple of Vancouver residents. But <clears throat> when you look at it, they're contributing to a very, um, to an underground market. An underground market involves stolen property, uh, not only property crime, but violent crime, drugs. Uh. An underground market worth over $4 billion alone in Canada, according to this loss prevention expert. It's $4.6 billion a year at this point, worth of losses to all retailers in Canada uh, on a yearly basis. And that's, you know, that's off the bottom line. That's, those are dollars that aren't used to pay for staff and open new stores. Um, so it, it certainly is something that uh, impacts the industry in a, in a big way. Despite the size of some of these smaller objects, it's causing a big problem for police. It's just a small fraction of, of what we deal with but it represents hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of crimes. Some of these crimes can turn very violent, and I think the public has a perception that, that uh, these are petty crimes, these are non-violent crimes, but I can tell you we've recently seen a, a large number of these uh, non-violent incidents turn, and uh, individuals have pulled weapons, knives, guns. So what does loss prevention want you to know? We've always got loss prevention members on duty um, and uh, interacting with our stores. Whether or not there's somebody um, you know, actively engaged with watching for, for this type of crime would depend on the exact store location and what's going on, but uh, there's always people on duty monitoring the stores and watching for this type of activity. Kurt Morgan in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. A funeral was held earlier this week for Constable Sarah Beckett of the West Shore RCMP. She died while on duty in Langford when a truck struck her cruiser. Thousands of the members of the public and her colleagues attended the memorial. In the wake of several sexual assaults around the Lower Mainland, a Langley gym is offering free self-defense classes to women in an effort to better protect themselves. Our reporter Jessica Fettigan brings us the details. Women are flocking to Revolution Martial Arts and Fitness in Langley for free self-defense classes. The gym started offering the defense classes in January and General Manager Jared Revel says it's more about concepts than anything else. 
concepts. The, the idea that, you know, first and foremost, to be smart about the things, your surroundings, how to uh, properly educate them on when they go into a facility, knowing all the exits, knowing the people that are around. If you feel like there's a bad place you're at, there's probably a bad place and maybe don't stay there. And, you know, if you feel like the situation's bad, get out. One of the main reasons Revolution Fitness decided to offer the free classes was in wake of all the sexual assaults that have been occurring around the Lower Mainland, most notably in Burnaby and Vancouver. The gym hopes that women can take something away to keep them safe in case they were ever assaulted. Oh, absolutely, yes. I think we had, there's been a spike in sexual assault, not just in Langley, but in Surrey especially. There's also been in Vancouver, um, and then there's a lot of criminal activity happening as well recently now more than anything and I think um, the, the more vulnerable you are and the more you feel as like a victim to the situation the more it's probably going to happen so we just want to make sure that everybody is able to have some, something under their belt so that they feel a bit more confident walking down the street. Revolution hopes they can keep women safe in any way they can. Jessica Fedigan in Langley for BCIT Magazine. The last few weeks of school are upon us and some students are already starting to feel the stress. We are now joined by life coach Kieran Chatha. Kieran, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, I'm happy to be here. So in the Lower Mainland, we're in a little bit more of a difficult job market, much more common to be turned down. How can we maintain a good mindset to get us through that? It's your mindset. It's um, having a growth mindset versus a judger mindset. You know, being really aware that this is an adventure and if you choose to look at it like that, it's really going to turn out to be more fulfilling for you and you'll end up with a lot more hope and optimism moving forward versus having a judger mindset where you might judge yourself as being, I'm good or this is right or this is wrong and that's going to be a lot more stressful. So if you can really be mindful of your mindset, that will take you a lot farther. And how are we able to remember that? What are some tips for remembering that kind of attitude? Mm. Yeah, know your core values. You know, core values are a good way to look at them is when you're triggered and to really identify as your core values and using those as your compass moving forward. Um, and your strengths, if you really get, have a good handle on what your core values and your strengths are, you'll take steps moving towards your fulfillment versus reacting to anything that comes your way and having holding on to that really strongly. So it can be a bit of a large transition for some of us going from that student and school world to going into the workforce and start kind of beginning our, our real lives. Can you give us some tips on that as well? Um, yeah, so I would say, you know, we have a negativity bias in our heads. You know, we're often looking for the negative and that really feeds into our old brain way. If you can practice a sense of gratitude and have an emotional hygiene routine, and that could be just being aware of the good things that are in your day and really cultivating that on a day-to-day -day basis, you're gonna get a lot farther because you're keeping the positive in your brain because we are already inclined to have a negativity bias in our brain, which makes us focus a lot more on the negative than on anything that is good. So you have to practice your emotional hygiene around that. And facing these negative or these challenges where people say no to you, that's never gonna be an easy, an easy thing to accept, but practice your gratitude and it'll take you really far, I promise. So is this one of the more difficult times in someone's life, this transitional period? Uh, it's difficult if you call it difficult. You know, again, it's really how you approach it. So if you say it's difficult or if I said it was exciting, there's two people that are going into the same situation. One saying it might be difficult, one saying it might be really exciting. Who do you think is going to have the better time? Well, thank you so much, Karen, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks. Coming up next on BCIT Magazine, an Abbotsford farm draws in highway commuters with their colorful spring flowers. And the Vancouver Canucks reflect on a lackluster season. A defining moment for me was when I finished my first internship and got lots of really great feedback from industry professionals. I would never imagine I'd be walking into the floors of TSN and thinking, I'm not a student anymore, I'm here to work. I will be starting a job with an investigative news program in Toronto and I'm really excited to see that grow into what will become hopefully my dream job. BCIT broadcast and online journalism, putting you to work. I chose BCIT because I know that all the programs are very hands-on. We have our own radio station, like it's, it's one of the best programs that I've ever heard of. 
I am starting a job on Monday, so confidence is high. Well, honestly, I didn't think it was going to be this fun. Over to sports now. After a poor season, Canucks management has met with the media to discuss plans for the team's future. Jessica Fedigan has more. After a disappointing season, head coach Willie Desjardins and general manager Jim Benning met with the media to discuss the season as well as the youth. We need young leaders to come in too. Like, you know, we're going to meet with. Uh, Tanovs and Edlers and Sutters and Dorsets and Markstrom and Horvat and, and talk about we need, we, need, we need another group to come through to help carry us. Jared McCann is part of that group. He, he showed, like the last goal he scored, like pull away, like he, he has that skill. And he's, he's got an edge too that you don't, you don't see. Like we're playing Anaheim, they're getting pretty physical. He's out pushing Getzloff. Like there's... The good ones have an edge. Despite the team's struggles, Benning said there were positives to take away from the season. The, the silver lining in all this this year is our young players got experience that they wouldn't normally get. With Ryan Miller getting older and Jacob Markstrom rising, up next for the Canucks is Thatcher Demko. You know, the path for Thatcher is, you know, if, if he agrees to sign with us now is, you know, there's gonna, he's going to have to uh, spend some time developing, um, you know, his game into the pro game and to, into a number one goalie at some point too. Benning says the youth movement started last year. So, you know, but having, you know, having gone through last year where we had a good, you know, regular season, but we lost out in the first round of the playoffs, I felt like, you know, we needed to start transitioning younger players into our into our group and start developing that next group of core players that this this organization can, you know, um, you know, win with like for a long time. It seems like better days for the Canucks are just around the corner. Jessica Fedigan in Vancouver for BCIT magazine. Jessica now joins us to talk more about the press conference. Jess, did Jim Benning say anything about the upcoming draft? Will they take a defenseman? Well, Eric, as we know, the Canucks will pick in the top three, or at least that's where it stands right now. Jim Benning has said that defense is a priority. However, they won't necessarily take a defenseman just because they need one. They will take the best player available at the time. There's also been rumors swirling around the future of Alexander Burroughs. Did Benning or Desjardins say anything regarding the fan favorite? Well, like you said, there have been rumors swirling that Burroughs' time in Vancouver is done. Benning did say that they haven't made a decision yet whether or not he will stay or go, but he did meet with management earlier in the week. Desjardins gave high praise for Burroughs' play as well as his leadership. Back to you. And another Vancouver sports team is having a tough start to the season. The Whitecaps have started the MLS campaign 2-3-1 and one after being blown out 4-0 to DC United last week. They visit Utah on Saturday to take on Real Salt Lake, looking to get back on the winning side. Despite the warm weather, a tulip farm in Abbotsford has had a slow start to the growth of a popular springtime flower. Our reporter Aaron Newbles brings us the details. From pink to yellow to orange, a sea of colour is sweeping across a family-owned farm. The first annual tulip festival is in full bloom after a slow start to the season. Despite a warm spring, just two weeks ago, this field was completely green. So we opened on March 25th. Uh, there wasn't much color. It was a little cooler than we were expecting, um, but we did have a few people out. And uh, over the last couple of weeks, it's gotten quite a bit busier, quite a bit popular. Still quite a few people here, even though it's only Monday and we're uh, excited. Yeah, we're open till May 1st. The delay in blooming bulbs was chalked up to windstorms that blew through Metro Vancouver. But just one weekend of sun turned it around for this land. Last October, a team of 15 people planted 2.5 million bulbs all in one day, all on this 10-acre lot right behind me. Many people come to pick their own flowers, while others see a good photo opportunity. The color is so striking, it's sparking interest among the community right from the highway. 
We saw this beautiful sea of color, and uh, my friend Norbert said, well, come on, let's just go in and take a look. So that's why we're here. It's gorgeous, so beautiful. What a wonderful way to come and spend the day. The attraction and success after just a few weeks has them looking ahead to next year's festival. We were just careful to watch them over until the spring when they're blooming, and then we'll dig them up in June and harvest them then. The Abbotsford Tulip Festival is the last remaining festival of its kind in BC. Aaron Ubell's in Abbotsford for BCIT Magazine. Above average temperatures this spring have been giving some Vancouverites the itch to start their summer gardening. My co-anchor Eric Blow talked to a gardening expert for some tips. I'm here with Alfred Kwan of the Wig Garden Centre and Nursery. And Alfred, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. No problem. Well, I was here to talk about some do's and don'ts for spring gardening now that spring has sprung. And so let's just start off with uh, the temperature because people see the sun in the, day, in the daytime and they just want to get out there and plant some stuff. But the nights can be quite cold. So yeah. do you have any tips for people who want to start their garden early? Well, I mean, you know, if, uh, you know stay away from the tender plants. You know, um, you know, people right now are phoning and coming in and wanting tomatoes, basil, right? Well, you know, unless you have a protected area, bring it in every night, right? And, and, and look after it, you know, if, if it's out in the open, avoid it for, you know, until, you know, we see uh, a break in, you know, the weather pattern. It's still very chilly. And so what type of plants can survive these cold nights we have? Well, I mean, you know, there's the cool crop, the uh, cabbages and for vegetables, cabbages and the, um, uh, the, some of the lettuces. And, you know, you can start, you know, you, the, um, the beans and stuff outside. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's still pretty cold. I mean, I'd hold off another week or two. Are there any uh, plants you find popular uh, at the start of spring? Well, right now, I mean, you know, there's the succulents and they're, they're one of the most popular plants in, 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 in the gardening industry um, in North America right now. What are your top three misconceptions about uh, planting when spring comes? Well, a lot of people jump the gun because uh, the sun is shining and uh, we're in early spring where, you know, really there's another three, four weeks of frost and uh, they come in and they want to buy plants, right? They want tomato plants, right? They want cucumbers, they want basils. Those are a few of the plants that um, need that a crucial night temperature. So there's one, what's number two on your list? Well, would be uh, uh, they come in to buy plants and they're not prepared for it. Like they're not prepped, their soil is not ready. And how about number three? Gosh, number three would be, uh, you know, uh, be prepared at this point because it's still early spring. It can revert back to cold. Uh, Alfred, thank you so much. Oh, you're Appreciate more than welcome. It. Yeah. There you have it, your top three misconceptions of spring gardening. Coming up next on BCIT Magazine, BCIT showcases its trades programs to future students. And the broadcast department gave a glimpse into the media industry. The most rewarding thing for me has been the relationships I developed in the program, both with instructors and classmates. My sense of confidence has never, never been higher. I mean, this, this program has offered great opportunities to be in real world, real industry situations, and, and being in those moments and knowing I can contribute, I can do this. It's exciting to be in this industry and to meet lots of great people and to make amazing friends. BCIT broadcasts and online journalism, realizing your potential. Stand by graphics, ready camera one. If you want to experience the fast-paced world of news, today on BCIT Magazine, striking. Make magic on a movie set, frame, and action. Or bring your creative ideas to life. BCIT's hands-on training will get you started. BCIT Television and Video Production. Your possibilities start here. Here's your community calendar for this week. Do you want to support young local talent? Then you can go for a free tour at the Burnaby Art Gallery and its new exhibition, Arts Alive. The tour happens on April 23rd from 2 to 4 p.m. Are you looking for a new hobby? Well, you can join Vancouver Rock Climbing Group for a beginner-friendly trek. It'll be at Climb 5 on April 19th in Coquitlam. 
Are you a space junkie? Then keep your Saturday nights open. The Cosmic Dark Matter Mystery Night encourages you to get your drink on while discussing the universe. That happens weekly at the H.R. McMillan Space Center in Vancouver. Still don't feel scientifically satisfied? Well, don't worry, Geek Enders has your solution. This group is bringing burlesque to the next level with a Star Wars themed show. The dates are April 15th and 16th. After all that work, 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 why not treat yourself by seeing the Barbados R&B goddess Rihanna? Her concert is at Rogers Arena on April 23rd. That was your community calendar for this week. Thanks for watching. Welcome back. BCIT held an open house on the weekend, attracting more than 20,000 students to the campus. My co-anchor, Eric Blow, has more. High school kids are lining up to get a taste of what it's like to be a student at BCIT. Over 20,000 kids are getting up close and personal with some of the programs offered at the school. Gets them aware of what's in the program, right? Through each building, everyone's going to have a different setup. And I think when they come here, they just they get a feel for how fun it is. Media is being consumed differently with the rise of mobile devices. And if there's a shift in the industry, there needs to be a shift in education. It's a really changing industry right now, so a lot of people don't realize what's out there, what's available, and what we teach here in this program. Visitors are taken for a tour around all three sections of the building, radio arts, broadcast journalism, and TV production, for a sneak peek of what students can expect to learn. Um, really, it's just an introduction to what the possibilities are. The studio that we're in right now is a green screen studio. It's just one small part of what video production can be. Of the three programs, all boast a graduate employment rate of at least 75 percent. The numbers remain high for two of the three programs when looking at former students working in the field they trained in. We're looking at putting kids online, on the air, behind the camera, in front of the camera, so it's a very varied curriculum here. The real world interaction has impressed both current and prospective students who think highly of the open house opportunity. Uh, well, I think it's good because in all these different programs they're showing you the kind of things they do every day, especially in here we're showing people the newsroom, the what we're doing here, anchoring and that kind of stuff and telling them what kind of stuff we're reporting, our BCIT magazine show. Uh, a radio station, that kind of stuff. So if they're interested in that, it can maybe push them in that direction. It's great. It's really, really fun. I've seen a lot of things and seen. I've got a lot of things to think about. Uh, I've got a lot of things that I want to try, but yeah, everything was pretty good enough. So well, it's a pretty I good opportunity. The reception was positive throughout the day. When students come through here, there's a lot of OMG moments where they look at this stuff and go, wow, isn't that neat? And the workforce of tomorrow walked away excited about their future. <laughs> Eric Blow in Burnaby for BCIT Magazine. While the broadcast department showed prospective students their studios, future trade students got their hands dirty as well. Kathleen Smithson has more. This is not your high school metal shop. Instructors here say that many people don't realize the importance and versatility of metal fabrication. I don't know if people know how vehicles are made. I don't know if people know how uh, motorcycles are made or how spaceships are made. Uh, and metal fabricators play a huge role in all of these projects. A lot of our grads are headed directly into the shipyards. Uh, other options would be custom bike shops, um, anything from working on building refrigerator, refrigeration units that go on the top of buildings to building conveyor belts for the forest industry. It's not just the projects that have changed. Over the years, the kind of students entering the trade programs have changed as well. And I chose this program because I like to create and build things. You'll see that there's probably some obvious tracking or there has been in the past as far as getting students into trades. Uh, I think we're seeing people now pick the trades because of the fit. It, it, uh, it fits into their life rather than we fit them into a trade. Okay. The demand for skilled tradespeople is expected to increase in BC. Kathleen Smithson in Burnaby for BCIT Magazine. Our reporter Kathleen Smithson joins us live. Kathleen, what was the turnout like at the welding information site? 
Well, Regan, there was a surprisingly low turnout. I only saw about a dozen people, um, despite the fact that Student Aid BC gives grants to students who are interested in trades. There didn't seem to be that much interest. What other factors could have influenced the turnout? Um, the trades buildings are at the back of the campus, so it could be people didn't know where they were, they were confused. Those events also didn't seem to be as well advertised, so that could have been part of the reason there were fewer people. Uh, back to you. BCIT students also showcased a new app at the open house. The app helps travelers buy foreign goods. I suppose important, it's important for us to explain to people that it is fun as well. You know, it's not just sitting at a computer. You're working with a team of interesting people, developing cool products that are going to be used by a whole bunch of other people and they're going to help people as well. It was just one of the booths available around the school for prospective students to browse and experience firsthand what goes on inside the classrooms. In entertainment news, Taylor Swift has been named the highest paid entertainer, raking in $80 million due to her sold out world tour in 1989. Others on that list include Lady Gaga raking in $59 million and Jay-Z at 56. If you have any questions or comments regarding this program, please visit us online at bcit-broadcast.com or bcitbroadcastnews.ca. I'm Eric Blow. And I'm Reagan Hasegawa. On behalf of the 2016 broadcasting grads, thanks for watching this year. We now leave you with images of the Tulip Festival in Abbotsford. Have, have a, a great, great weekend. weekend.